uh, basically there's a script I'm going to you know you're going to copy and you're going to run that will help fix the path all right so the first thing you need to do in this case is we need to also ensure that all right so we need to also ensure that the you know the necessary permissions are set so in the in the first place we need to also ensure that the permissions for you know the proxy in the db now we need to change the permissions from the radius d user to belong to the apache group on the proxy.com file this is because we want the wi-fi hotcake uh, manager to actually you know kind of have permission to write on this file all right so once we do that we need to change the permission to 664 on the proxy server and the dictionary file right so the dictionary file is also we need to change that and once we do that then we need to also run the you know the conversion script so to run the conversion script i'm going to show you how that will be done so that will be inside our tools directory in the root subdirectory um you will notice there's a file here called ubuntu to centos path converter.sh so this is normal so we need to make it executable so you know i need to ex append the executable right so ubuntu.sh so you notice now it will change to green because now it has the executable rights so we need to run the file so this will go ahead and change all the path in all the files that are required you know to, to make this thing work so if you go back to your etc rat db and you kind of try to look at the dictionary file again you will see that it has fixed the path in the usr share free radius directory so this is quite this is you know this is good so one of the things we also need to also ensure is inside the rlm pell modules inside the you know inside the conf there is a settings file so also ensure that the database configuration also here matches your database so just in case you changed the default uh one of the things you can also change here is things like you know things like your time zone so i mean nigeria you know we're actually plus one here all right so once you've gone ahead and set up the you know the dictionary file we need to also ensure that the free radius you know because the wi-fi hotspot manager uses some custom you know dictionary files so we need to also set that so to set that we need to go to the usr share directory we need to go into free radius and then we need to go into dictionary dot chili spot and somewhere between this uh the space we need to paste the configuration so i'll open the you know in the script you see the wi-fi you know free radius dictionary attributes so we need to copy this files this we need to copy and then we need to paste here uh, you can see these are attributes that are you know specific to wi-fi hotspot things like the wi-fi voucher the wi-fi reset and so on so once you set that uh, you can go ahead and save it and the next thing we need to do here is to test that free radius will start uh, one thing i also notice is if you try to start the default radius it will give you an error uh, the reason for the error here you can see like the pal module instance station failed uh, you can see the can't locate the time rest you know time rest module so we need to install the pal module for that so to do that we need to you know recall our yom and we need to clear all this all right so i'll show you how to guess sometimes to guess the package name so one of the things we need to run is we need to run the pal all right so time rest so uh, the, the reason why i'm doing that is because if you notice time then slash res or high res so we can go ahead and try this if it fails then we modify it to high res so usually to tell you that the package does not exist all right good all right so let's try high res all right now you can see it picked it up so this is what i learned some time ago about guessing package names basically from the errors you see there so we need to install the pal time res module and once that is installed we can go ahead and you know try to run the rad x all right so you can see here now it's failing to bind to usr local var run you know so the reason why this is failing is because the default radius.com file that um kind of comes with the 
Wi-Fi hotkeys is off right so I will show you a quick fix uh, what you need to do is you need to go and you know kind of edit or copy the you know from the org that we have the radius.com file we need to copy the path location uh, this is basically what I mean so you copy this path up to this point and then since we are presently in the main rad db file we need to also change the radius d.com file and we need to replace all this right so so you notice some minor discrepancies in the files so you know that's why that's a quick fix anyway so all right so we can go ahead and try the this for the last time uh you should go to the ready to process state so this means everything is good just loaded every single uh, option uh to continue now we need to i'll just you know run the control c to kill the process so you can also you know kind of confirm the process by running the grep on radius all right so we need to remove psax basically so it's empty it's all right so we need to ensure that radius d is on and we need to start it as a service so service radius d okay no kind of start all right so you can see it's okay so we've started for radius so this is good uh, the next thing we need is also set in this case is since we've installed the ppp you know ram pop for pop you know authentication and chop uh, we need to also ensure that the ownership of the file is set to you know Apache uh, belonging to the Apache group and the file is in the PPP subdirectory called sharp secrets uh, so we need to also you know kind of make sure that the chap secret is given the permission of 664 right so once you do that so you can service you know we need to also install one file so I, I I kind of skipped that okay so before we can actually successfully run the PPP chap process we need to also ensure that we install the PPP file so I'll go to the roots to the tools file and you notice we have the PPP the PPTPD you know RPM file so we need to run the RPM PPTPD right so once this is installed you can go ahead and make sure that it starts on boot so pptpd on and then service pptpd start all right so you can see that we have this started and you know started you know why well so one thing i need to, i want you to also confirm anytime you're setting this up is to go into the wi-fi cakes directory go into the you know the conf subdirectory the config right so in there you see a file called you know wi-fi and because we run run the the wi-fi script you can see it went ahead and fixed even the path to all this file so you can see it's very important uh, and in this file you need to you can also go ahead and configure so many settings here you can go ahead and say okay well i want to configure my email uh, if you're using if you're going to use the email to notify the you know your permanent users so you can go ahead and do that so you can set things like your country code for the maps so i'm in nigeria this would be ng you know you can basically leave most of this blank and come back later to you know check what's going on uh if you really want to understand this but for the sake of the video and the time i'm going to skip most of this but just to ensure, just to show you that there's also a you know kind of a different file here so one thing i also want you to set up to understand here is if you notice we started the pptpd service but the pptpd service you know kind of points to the server ip so we need to copy this address all right go into the etc pptpd.com file scroll to the end and in there we need to set up the local ip option and we need to tell it that local ip will start from the this address all right so the local ip is equal to the wi-fi.php <coughs> pptpd server ip option right so one of the other option you need to also confirm here is the database.php file uh this is also important when you change your database credentials all right so we can go ahead and give pptpd a restart because of the change we made all right so this is just to you know you can as well just run the restart kill command so this will go ahead and shut it down and then 
let's see all right so go ahead and start it as well so once you have that set up the next thing we need to also confirm is that we have the cron because some things will be running behind the scenes so we make sure that chrome is running and to ensure that chrome is running you can check cron so you can see we have cron tab crony and then cron anacron so but there's a there's a kind of cool interface to cron tab so you can see if i run cron tab dash e you can see i can set all the different options uh, in here so you know i'm just going to ignore that uh one of the things we need to also do is because we are already inside the wi-fi cake directory uh we need to jump back into the setup subdirectory and you know go into cron right so in here we're going to copy the file wi-fi i'm going to copy it into cron.d right so we copy the wi-fi file to the cron.d file all right and then we need to run the cron.d slash wi-fi file we need to edit that uh, one of the things you notice immediately is that this file was you know still uses the ubuntu um, user for the apache web server so we need to change that to centers and the path we need to fix as well so i'm going to search all the occurrence of you know the www.data user and we need to change that to apache and we need to replace all we need to repeat that again for the path var dub dub right we need to repeat that and we need to ensure that this will be var dub 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 html all right so this should go ahead and fix the path uh, make sure it's correct and we go ahead and save the file Alright, so one thing I also want to make sure that you guys follow is uh, at the moment if I if we go back to the page and we refresh just to ensure everything kicks in and we log in. Usually if you are new to this, if you see the error on the NAS on the NAS devices, you should see sorry, an error occurred. Uh, the first thing you need to, you know come to your mind is uh, you freak out normally. So but this is not a big problem. You're not supposed to freak out. The reason why this is happening is because there is this discrepancy so i'm just going to show you there's a slight var log httpd you know kind of error uh and then this is what's going on so anytime you try to access that page the apache user is going and saying hey man um you said there's a vendor uh, i can't open the file you said is required inside the swift vendor swift file because i can't find it all right so the reason also uh why we can fix this we need to go into the Wi-Fi kick directory and in the Wi-Fi kick directory you can see that there's a file called vendors so if you go into the vendors directory here you can see let me do a ls l you can see the files the names are there right but in that's in the error message it shows that it was the path right so you can see that in the Swift library but in this case this is just a file right you can see there's no d in here so there's no directory so the reason is because the because of the svn and the file and how we copied it it lost the information about the you know kind of link or the soft link that was created initially so we need to fix that so to do that we need to just remove the swift file we need to remove the fpdf file all right so we need to also create a new symbolic link for the fpdf file uh, we need to fix that all right so let's go ahead and remove the fpdf file again and create the symbolic link correctly this time around so this is going to be the fpdf 16 we need to link it to the fpdf you know directory and we need to also ensure that the same link for the swift 406 is also set to swift and once you do an ls-l you should see that this should fix the problem uh, we also need to make sure that the ownership is set correctly so no big deal we can just easily type this right so to ensure that we have this set up correctly so once you do that uh, basically if you try to access the NAS page again this time around you will see that to come on because we fixed that error and obviously if you do the var log detail on the var log file you can see that this was just the last error nothing happened again after that 
all right so hopefully this video uh, even though I said it shouldn't be more than one hour uh, I really don't know how long it has taken so far but you know I just at some point I wanted to be so thorough so that you can understand how all these things I know are need kind of connected together so you can go ahead and for instance edit the NAS device information you can see this connects this has the credentials of your free radio server you can see things like availability you know you can see so many so many options set here as well so this is you know basically what you know you can go ahead and set up if you have a problem please drop me a comment on the blog i'll post the you know i'll kind of compress all the files that i've used in this video and i'll put it on a link on the port on the <coughs> lies on my blog and you can basically download that and you know let me know what you think right so what i have not covered in this video basically is setting up the captive portal itself this is just setting up wi-fi hotspot manager just to ensure that you know you know how to set it up and it comes on um you know successfully so um basically if you are so interested interested if you are still interested in setting up the wi-fi manager um i'll come up later in another video to show you how to set up the kova chili hotspot on a machine and then we see how we can integrate it with the Wi-Fi hotspot manager so that we can actually run you know like billing system on the captive portal so but until then um, basically you know I hope you enjoyed the video uh, Dirk Vanderwald is a very great guy he has really spent so much time building the softwares and I hope he gets the you know kind of recognition he deserves uh, just as an additional note he has written a book it's in a part about free radios for beginners it's a very nice book very nice read you can Go ahead and check it out yourself if you're interested in learning you know how wi-fi hotspot was put together and basically the radios you know technicalities and nitty-gritty explained all right so um thanks once again guys and hope to catch you guys later